pain in a moment. Come on, just go. Twink through the eye. Just like that. Just like that. In the moment, in the twinkling of the eye, at the last trump. So this is the last trump. This is the last trump. We're now living in the next to the last trump. The last gospel blast. The last sound to assembly. The last call to war. We're living in that time. Oh, if I could wake up the church, if I could get the church and, and let them uh, pay attention, let them see. If I could just reach out here and I can't do it. Sometimes I feel so helpless that I can't make them see. I can't, I can't, I can't quicken their mind. I can't, no matter what anointing comes upon me or comes upon you or the ministry, there's some that will sleep and they'll put no oil in their vessel and be a foolish virgin. They have to fulfill the scripture. Scripture must be fulfilled. And it's sad to think that, but it's true. And, and, and he said, then the dead shall be raised uh, incorruptible and we shall be changed. What a day, what a day. This corruptible body so, oh, you know, I don't want to go until the Lord would call me. Sometimes I really get a longing. Lord, relieve me of this burden. Take this body that I'm suffering in. Take this mind that's bothering me, Lord. Take it. Sometimes I just, I want to just shed it, just get rid of it, quick as I can. Uh, and I, I'm not, I don't get morbid. I want to stay here. Uh, be a part of God's people as long as I can. But sometimes I just feel that hunger in me to put on the incorruptible. I looked at Sister Lorraine, slipped right on out like a ship going to sea. And I thought, why wow, that's so peaceful. Her struggling, her pain, her inability to swallow. Uh, uh, all gone in a moment, rest, peace. And a change comes. Uh, what a what a what a joy to know. See, it, it would not it would not be a joy if we didn't know the truth. But I know the truth. We're not to sorrow as others, which have no hope. I have a hope. You've got a hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah! I have a hope. God, you couldn't take it away from me. You couldn't steal it from me. I hid this treasure. I found this treasure hid in a field. And I bought the field and I went and hid this treasure in my field. Thank God. Now this treasure is hidden in me. It's hidden in you. So let's stop right there and give you a chance to uh, comment or ask a question if you have one. Brother Bernard, we'll start with you. Um... Right there at the, uh, the parable of the fig tree, Guatemala, I have, um, I have heard many statements, many remarks about that passage right there, that scripture. And um, I know I, I can tell that a lot of men have it wrong, and they mistreat it wrong, translated. So if, if the leaf is righteousness, yes. so now I see why Jesus then had it done, so okay, I'll give it another year. That's right. So that's mean no men have that choice to say cut it down. That's right. Because a lot of men state it as the church. Right. If the, if the tree, when they make those statements, if the tree is not produce, cut it down. Yeah. So we can't tell who's not produce, who's not produce. That's right. We better be very careful with that. You know, we can't we can't look at a tree and curse it. Uh, you know, uh, because uh, uh, God. He, See, God, uh, yet, uh, like Jesus said, he said, no, uh, let it, let's dung about it, let's dig about it, let's fertilize it, let's uh, let it continue to see this year. if there could be fruit on it, you know. Yeah, this year. And then if it doesn't produce. Then if it doesn't produce. Then we'll cut it down. But see, uh, in other words, don't, don't put your judgment on it. Wait, wait, let 
God do his, his work. Let him, his work be done. And Israel, um, I like what Job said. Let's look at Job 14. And then I'll give you a chance to make more comment. Uh, and I won't go on and pause so everybody else can get in. Let's look at this tree, the, the mystery of life and the vine, the mystery of life in a, in a tree. In the 14th uh, chapter of Job, said, uh, verse 7, verse 7, Job 14. For there is hope of a tree. See? If it be cut down, then it will sprout again. See, he finally cut the tree down that didn't bear any fruit. Israel was cut down. But there was life in that stump. Yes, sir. There was life in that stump. See, and he said that it will sprout again. Israel is going to be revived again. And that the tender <clears throat> branch, see the tender branch, and that thing becomes tender again. When the ministry of Israel becomes tender again, their all will not cease. It won't be put out of existence. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and Israel has, and the and the, <coughs> the stock thereof die in the ground. Paul said he was the, the stock of Israel. The stock thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water. And that's what Israel is going to be revived, is the scent of the latter rain. The latter rain falling on the Gentile church, they're going to pick up the scent of that rain. Through the scent of water, it will bud. Aaron's rod, it will bud again. And bring forth boughs like a plant. I love that parable. I love that picture. See, uh, through the sin of water, Israel will be revived and refreshed through the scent of the latter rain uh, falling and uh, coming back again in the earth. And they, they'll see a witness. And they'll say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Jesus said, is that, is that Matthew 23? It seems it is. Uh, the closing of Matthew 23. Or somewhere in there he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, and you'll not see me again. You'll not see me again. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered thee as a chicken death her brood. Yet you would not. Yet you would not. And he said, Behold, your house is left desolate. Under you desolate. Two thousand years their house has been desolate. And he said, You'll not see me again until you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They've got to recognize Christ in a Gentile ministry that's coming in the name of the Lord. They'll never recognize the Baptist church. Israel will never recognize the Methodist church. They'll never recognize the Catholic church. They're going to recognize a ministry that's coming in the name of the Lord. They have no other name but the name of the Lord. And then the first will be last. See, Israel was first. <coughs> They'll be last. They'll come in the last. They were the first back there. But they're going to be the last down there. And the last, the Gentile, will be first. See that Jesus said that. That'd be just a reversal of what it was.
came unto his own. His own received him not. See, but as many as received him. So the first will be last. The last shall be first. Jesus said that. Every word Jesus said was truth. And when you understand it, you realize he never spoke foolish. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He never spoke foolishly. Every word he said was a word that was quickened of God. He said, the words that I speak in here, they're not mine. They're the Father's, <laughs> which sent me, gave them to me. He was speaking the words of God. He wasn't speaking his own words. And there's going to be a ministry coming to that place where they'll speak of the word of God, and they won't speak their word. And it won't be a lot of the foolish talking that we've had to hear the last few years. Man's opinion, man's idea. Uh, that's why Jesus said to let your conversation, let your way of life be yea, yea, nay, nay. In other words, don't get out the boundary line of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost speak through you. And anything more than this is coming in the evil. Let your, let your words be seasoned with salt, as my words are, Jesus said. All right, any question, comments? Brother Pete. Uh, Brother John, I think it was what, the 29th verse where you read, 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 and it seemed like it, I don't know, I had a different view of that. Revelation 12 talked about she went into the wilderness and the place where Right. And that was a remnant of the first church. Mm -hmm. still right, into the wilderness, a place prepared to go. So, uh, yeah. this wasn't... Uh, uh, no, see, that, in Revelation 12, um, it shows the church preserved in the wilderness, the woman. Right. She, her man-child was caught up unto God in his right. throne. That's the overcomers of the early church, caught up unto God. And she fled into the wilderness where there was a place prepared for her of God. See, that, that it wasn't because the church, because those stars fell, and because the powers of heaven was shaken, the apostles were martyred and killed, right. powers of heaven shaken. It didn't mean that the early church was destroyed. No, no, no. There, there was a backbone that went on through that wilderness, remnant of her seed. down through that 1260 years. Absolutely. Yeah. That, see, you had just had that one big Roman church over there. They was the only people who knew how to read. Yeah. They had people in poverty. Right. And see, and then you go on in another place in Revelations that talk about the spirit of frogs. <laughs> and when God gave me the understanding of that through Brother Cyrus' teaching, <clears throat> the frogs, when they're, the only time they look for, can see forward is when they're down flat. Right. When they're sitting up, they can only see backwards. And right. that's what that church is doing. They're looking back at the dark ages because they want to go back to that. Had the, had the three spirit and, and like unclean frogs. Well, yeah, they, they had a great power. They had all the power in the world. Rome did. Oh, every kind of, Yeah, yes, they and see, a, a people were republicly stricken. They didn't even know how to read. So they was the only ones that had the word of God, and they had to accept what right. they said. Right, exactly so. So there was a limit, though, that didn't have to go through or wasn't under that, that they were scared. In Christ. And yes. God in Christ. Yeah. And so, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, you know, uh, like David, when he fled to the cave of the devil uh, in the Old Testament, <clears throat> David fled to, the, to escape Saul. Right. Fled to the cave of that devil. Right. And with his ragged band of army that he had at that time, 400 men or something. And yeah. they were preserved. <laughs> they fled. That's the same picture. The same picture. 